Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's virtual brown bag. Today's topic is MS and PhD pipelines here at UTA. And what the heck that means is master's degrees and doctorate degrees here in the College of Engineering um, and what opportunities you have and how it works. My name is Dr. Carter Tiernan. I am your moderator for today. I am in the Department of Computer Science Engineering, but I'm also Assistant Dean in the college and work with all the colleges. Also with us today, we have four speakers. I'm going to uh, call them each in order and let them introduce themselves, tell you a little bit about their role in their department. So I'm going to start off with Ginger Dickens. So tell us about yourself just a little bit and a little bit about your role in the department, please, Ginger. Hi, everybody. My name is Ginger Dickens, and I am an advisor to graduate students in the Computer Science and Engineering Department. Hey, um, Ginger. Hi. Uh, if you could look over towards your camera. Yep. I there you go. <laughs> uh, so I advise graduate students in Computer mm -hmm. Science and Engineering, and um, I help with PhD. And I do some master's application processing and I answer lots and lots and lots of questions in our email. Uh, I've been in higher education for over 15 years and my latest role as an advisor has been uh, really interesting and I, I really like working with students. So please let us know your questions and we'll do what we can to help you. Thanks. All right. So I'm now going to turn it over to our other CSE advisor with us today. Um, and Donna, I hope you have your camera able to be turned on for us. I do. <clears throat> Excellent. You have to excuse my voice. I'm losing my voice today. So ah. my name is Donna French. I am a senior lecturer here in the CSE department. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been a graduate advisor for just over a year now. Uh, I mostly teach freshman level classes, so I become familiar with the freshmen as they come through. But I have thoroughly enjoyed being part of the advising team, working with Ginger and the others, and I mostly work on admissions. And <clears throat> I like to answer questions as best I can and still feel like I'm learning and learn new something new every day. Ginger always teaches me something new. Thank you, Thanks. Donna. So we also have representatives from the electrical engine engineering department, Dr. Saibun Twachwa, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Saibun Twachwa with the Department of Electrical Engineering. Uh, I'm currently serving as the undergraduate faculty advisor. So uh, I'm also heavily involved in actually uh, creating some of the program and the curriculum redesign uh, for electrical engineering. So now we are focusing more on career readiness. So once you're done with your bachelor, master, and PhD, you should be able to go to do research or industrial uh, environment and be successful at that. Uh, my, uh, in terms of research, uh, I, my area of research is in micro remote sensing, and I've been teaching both undergraduate and graduate level courses. So that's me. So if you have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot it up, shoot it. We'll try to uh, explain what are the benefits of going to grad school, especially in engineering. Um, uh, and um, uh, we have a lot of panel here that are very experienced in this area. Thank you very much. And our final panelist today with us is Dr. Paul Combination, who is wearing many hats these days. He is the chair of the Industrial, uh, Industrial Manufacturing and Systems Engineering Department. He is also our interim uh, associate dean for graduate studies. So I'm going to let him talk uh, about himself and a little bit about his department. He's also going to be our reference for other departments where we don't have specific faculty members listed. So if you have questions about mechanical or bio, we will together try to answer those as well. All right, and Paul, take it away. And you're muted, you're muted. Paul. <laughs> Too many buttons. Right. Thank you for the introduction. Yes, I'm covering a lot of different hats here. Um, industrial engineering it tends to be one of the programs where folks who have a bachelor's degree in another engineering field and decide they want to get a master's, but they want to do something different and exciting, 
will often come to industrial engineering <laughs> for our masters in IE or our engineering management program. Uh, in my role for the dean's office, I've also done a, a good bit of work on recruiting, and this is recruiting for both bachelor's students here in the US who want to go on for master's or PhD and also our international students. And because of that recruiting, I have a, a little bit of familiarity with the different departments. So if you run into questions and are looking for someone to email, feel free to send me a note. All right, thank you very much. So today we are hoping to get questions from our students who are participating. So we really want your questions. Uh, we have some questions, general questions prepared that our panelists will address, but anyone who's attending, we would really love to have your questions. So please do put them in the chat um, in the Q&A section and they'll come up to us and then I'll present them to our panelists. All right, so to get us started, I'm going to just uh, ask each panelist to give me sort of their view and their thoughts about why a student might want to go to a graduate degree program. Um, because some of our attendees are probably most of our attendees are going to be undergraduates. So why should they think about graduate school instead of just going directly out into the workforce? And Saibun, I'm going to put you on the spot and I'm going to have you uh, give us your thoughts to start us off on why should a student think about going to graduate school? Why should an undergrad think about that? Well, uh, I can start with the two most important thing, right? Number, number one, the kind of job that you'll be enjoying if you have more advanced training. And the other thing is the salary. Uh, there'll be, there's a big gap in uh, once you get a bachelor versus a master degree and PhD in terms of the salary gap. But more importantly is that um, all of us realize over the last 10 years, there's so much advances um, in technology and, and engineering and the undergraduate degree provide you with a, a foundation, very broad based foundation that you can go to pretty much uh, uh, doing many different things. However, uh, that's not enough depth. Uh, if you go to a graduate study, number one, you get to actually enjoy more in your work. You are involving something at a higher level and it's very much more rewarding compared to the bachelor degree. And the other thing, of course, I mentioned earlier is the salary. So you go in there, just like if you think about um, the kind of job, if you go to the, in the old days where you have what we call quote unquote blue collar worker versus some uh, somebody is doing more on the design and higher level aspects. So intellectually, it is more challenging, it's more rewarding. And financially, it is definitely worth the, uh, uh, the effort and, and the expenditure to go to an extra year and a half or a year or two years to get your graduate degree. So in, in terms of competitiveness right now, because of the advances in technology, we're no longer competing locally, but we're competing globally. So in the US, the salary level, you're talking about $80,000, $90,000. Now, in order to be able to justify that, you must be able to provide uh, value added service from your part. Otherwise, the same job can go overseas, right? So in the US, in, of, uh, when I discuss with this student, it is very important that you uh, bring up uh, and bring your skill level up to at least at the graduate level so that you can stay competitive globally. So that's looking forward in the future. So that's my two cents of uh, opinion that, that I've been observing over the years. All right. And uh, who would like to add something to that? Because that was great. So, uh, um, I would like to add a comment to that. Go ahead, Donna. Uh, the best time to work on that advanced degree is right after your undergraduate degree. It's usually when you have the best time and your you know, already in that schedule of taking classes and being prepared. And you also never know what life is going to throw at you eventually. I mean, I got my master's degree many, many, many years ago and it never really applied to my job per se. But after I worked in industry for 22 years and then I came to academia, that master's degree became very important. So just because you don't foresee needing it within the next couple of years or soon, that does not mean that you won't ever find that useful. You don't know what life is going to bring and what you may want to move on and to do at some point. 
And again, I do believe the easiest time to get it is right after. I mean, if you're an undergraduate student, you should be thinking about doing fast track. And the fast track, you can get a master's degree in just a little over a year. So it's not actually adding that much time. So it, it's just something to think about. And again, just kind of saving up for the future because you don't know what may come. Yeah. All, right. All right. Anybody else at the moment? Those were great answers both. Thank you so much. All right, so having thought now about why you might want to go to graduate school, what we're going to do now is talk about some specifics related to our graduate programs here in the College of Engineering. We do have graduate programs in every department, and so I'm going to try to list them all and my panelists will tell me if I miss something. So we have graduate programs in aerospace engineering, biomedical engineering, in civil engineering, in construction management, in computer science, in computer engineering, in electrical engineering, in industrial engineering, and in engineering management. And is there also systems engineering, Paul? I believe. And we also have um, mechanical engineering. We have material science engineering. We have software engineering. And I think that's all the grad programs. Did I get everything? I believe. OK, so data science. data science, right? Brand new degree program. OK, and we do have some certificate graduate certificate programs as well that I didn't list. Those are just um, masters or PhD level programs that I listed. So there's lots of different choices out there. So let's talk a little bit about how an undergrad could get into a master's program in some of these areas. So um, Ginger, maybe I'll pick on you here so to tell us, uh, tell us about the different paths that an undergraduate could take to get into um, any of the master's programs, and obviously you're in C, so I'll let you focus on those and then we'll add the other programs. But there's going to be a lot of overlap, so. Sure. So in CSE for the master's degree, um, just like uh, the other gentleman was saying, a master's degree is a chance to hone your skills. It's when you narrow your focus of interest. A bachelor's Ginger. has lots of. Remember yeah. your cameras. Yeah. Over the side. There okay. we go. Thank um, you. Yeah. So a bachelor's degree has lots of electives and other um, free form uh, classes that you can take, whereas a master's degree is much more focused and then the PhD is very focused. So as a master's degree student, and just like Dr. Chernin said, we have computer science, computer engineering, and software engineering masters in the CSE department. So you'll, you'll pick for computer science and computer engineering, you'll pick two specialty areas. So you'll have some general graduate computer science coursework, but then you also um, laser in on two specialty areas that you take three classes each in. Um, and also, I mean, having a graduate degree from a US um, institution is a big uh, advantage uh, just because it's from the US. So it's, it's just a chance to really get into what your specialty area is so that you can have more training for what your job perspective might be as far as a specific interest. Does that answer the question? So I also want to know a little bit more about how a student who's currently an undergrad gets into one of the master's programs. What do they need to do? So for the master's programs, um, there are fast track programs. CSE has one. I know other departments have fast track programs as well. And those are where as an undergraduate, you can take up to three graduate level courses and you can count them in both degrees. So that's a quicker way to earn your, your master's degree. Now, if you're not interested in doing that, you can apply just directly to the master's program through Apply Texas. Uh, to go for your master's or we also have the bachelor's to PhD program and in that program a person who has a bachelor's degree jumps right into PhD studies. They do not earn a master's. 
Now you can't stop out in CSE and pick up a master's and then leave. So it's it's really it takes a commitment to go all the way to PhD. But you will apply for admission for the BS to PhD program with us, uh, or you apply for admission to the master's program of your choice. Thank you. And would anybody like to add to that? Yes. Go ahead, Paul. We've had a lot of comments about you know helping out with salaries and all. One of the things we did notice is that um, in previous previous times, getting a master's degree was something you did to help you get ahead. We have found now that companies are putting a great deal of emphasis on continuing education. Um, they say the half life of knowledge for engineering is about 24 months on some of our fields. So for you to be able to do that, uh, you know, and continue in your career, you're going to need to continue on to. Uh, so education isn't something you finished your bachelor's degree and say bye, you never go back again. Um, there are some people that do that, but it really does have a negative impact on career opportunities. One of the things we recently found in a survey was that the average engineer changes jobs, and I, and I don't mean changes companies, but they change positions approximately every 18 months. And so that means you need to continually be developing your skills and reinventing yourself. So not only are you able to advance in the company you're in, but it also keeps your career options open. So if you decide later on you want to switch companies, switch domains, uh, you've got the skill sets to be able to do that. That same survey said that the average engineer now changes careers five times in their career in their uh, over their working life. I don't know if any of you had relatives that you might know who went to work and they were perhaps called a GM man or a Ford man. Uh, and yes, that's old world there. Uh, but those are people who went to work for a company and stayed there for 30 years. That doesn't happen nowadays. People change jobs and change careers very quickly. So having those advanced degrees makes you more marketable, both increasing salary and just giving you more options so you can go chase different dreams that you might have. Thank you very much. So we have a student question. Yay, thank you. All right, and we want more questions. So anybody attending, we want more questions. So the question is, what would be the difference between going straight into PhD versus going to master's? And how would that affect the career options? So who would like to take this first? Uh, that means I get to pick. So uh, let's see. How about, uh, Paul, you unmuted, so I guess you're willing to take it. So what's the difference between going straight into the PhD versus going to the master's and how that affects career options? I unmuted because I could see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it depends on the student's interest, where they want to go, and then also what program they're in. Some programs are very, very applied, um, and I, I'm going to stretch a little bit here. A lot of the students I've worked with in mechanical, civil, and industrial, um, a lot of those programs are really focused heavily on giving you work skills so you can go out and, and have as many options as possible on, on getting employed. So in cases like that, a lot of times we'll encourage students to look at the bachelor's to master's program. Um, depending what department you're in, I think Ginger had mentioned you could finish it in 18 months. I just had a student in industrial engineering who finished her master's and two certificates within 12 months. Uh, and it's because of you know good planning. She took the right courses in the undergraduate. Uh, you know, so basically within 12 months, she's made herself incredibly marketable. Now, some folks um, and again, some departments and programs, particularly some student interests may be uh, related more towards product development or discovering new knowledge. Um, we have some students who really get involved in the undergraduate research programs and they they volunteer and work in faculty's labs and you know take advantage of all those opportunities. Those are the type of students that may want to consider doing the bachelor's to PhD program because you're already working with people and you like that type of, of advancement for your career that you can work on discovering new knowledge. So you want to look at what your interests are, what gives you the most options, um, and don't be afraid to reach out to faculty. Talk with specific faculty that you enjoyed in class, you enjoyed working with. Those are the type of relationships you want to take advantage of, and they can help you decide if going to a master's or going to the PhD is right for you. There's no one answer. 
you want to find the path that you know follows your passions and you're interested in. Thank you very much. Anybody want to uh, add to that? Uh, I can add a little bit. Uh, what uh, Dr. Companation says is very true. Depends on uh, what your uh, your uh, career or what you like to do. Um, but in terms of the uh, uh, what they call it investment, um, both degree, master degree and direct to PhD require 30 credit hours. So, uh, so in other words, one you got a master after you do the 30 credit hours. The other one you go straight uh, to PhD with the 30 credit hours, at least in electrical engineering. And you can have an early start by doing a uh, when you're in undergraduate. In other words, you can take a, a up to nine credit hours that can be applied toward your um, your graduate degree, either through fast track or uh, through taking classes after you finish your bachelor degree. So you have several options uh, in on order to pursue it. If you do fast track, of course, then you save in terms of the uh, requirement for GRE and application fees. And so there's some benefit to do fast track. So uh, yeah, in terms of the time investment and so on, uh, they are about the same, but again, the, the, uh, the depth, the, the kind of coursework and the focus is, is definitely different. One is more on the uh, skill sets uh, that employable. You can go out there and work immediately for master. PhD is more on the, I would say, deep thought type things. Something's a lot deeper. Uh, you probably want to go to academia or research facilities or high-end type uh, system development. So that's just an addition to what uh, Dr. Companation mentioned. Thank you. So hopefully the person who asked the question got some good answers there. And if you want more, just ask us another question. We'll be happy to address that. Um, so currently, and I'm going back to, to our set questions. Currently, can you tell us what our the GRE or test entrance requirements for different programs for the master's for the PhD for our UTA students going into our UTA programs. And I know that we may have a difference during COVID, before COVID, after COVID, so feel free to make those distinctions. Um, so who would like to start us off? Saibun, you're still unmuted. Do you want to start and tell us about the requirements for the master's or the PhD if they're current UTA students? Yeah, I think if you're in fast track program, the GRE requirement uh, is waived. And I think also there's a, I, I, uh, there's a trend nowadays that uh, after this COVID, uh, people are questioning whether or not GRE is really a good indicator of successful completion in uh, the master's study. So uh, right now it's still required if you just apply for master's degree. But again, uh, check with the graduate advisor. Uh, Sometimes this can be a uh, wave depending on your background and situations. But uh, again, as what uh, Dr. Tianan mentioned earlier, after this COVID, we begin to learn what's really critical. But yeah, uh, faster is definitely you, the, the uh, registration, I mean, the uh, right, call it, uh, application fee is waived, and then the GRE test is, is waived. Thank you. Any additions to that, Donna, Ginger, Paul? Did he cover everything? I think I will put emphasis on contacting the specific department. Yes. Um, you'll find a lot of people on the outside look at engineering as one whole and we all do things the same, but every program has very unique requirements. So right. definitely the best thing to do is talk with the advisor. Um, a lot of programs are waiving masters, GREs, some are not. Um, even for the PhD, if you're going directly into the program or if you have work experience, all those things impact what the requirements are. Um, I will mention one other thing too, and that is that master's programs tend to be, um, we evaluate the candidate individually. So if you meet the qualifications, you're, you, know, you can be admitted. PhD programs do tend to be a bit competitive. Um, so the entrance requirements are usually to get you to the gate. Um, so don't be don't be frustrated if you apply directly to a PhD program and they say no we can't take you a lot of times they may say look go ahead and finish your master's degree first um, and then we can consider you for the PhD uh, that doesn't actually slow you down in most cases and I wanted to since I have the floor ginger I was going to make one comment I know several of the folks had mentioned master's programs are great because they help you specialize there are actually some programs, and I'm just throwing this out because 
of industrial engineering and engineering management tend to do the opposite. Uh, we have a lot of students who come in and say, I don't know what I want to do in life. Uh, definitely not five years from now, maybe not even next year. So there are certain programs that are designed to broaden your skill base. Um, so you don't necessarily specialize more, you actually open up more options. Um, and again, that's something you'd want to talk with an advisor on to see if that if uh, focusing in a particular area is good or perhaps you want something that's more of a generalist um, because you don't know where you want to end up in life. I'm still trying to work that out myself, so. <laughs> that's why you have all those hats, Paul. That's why I have all those hats. Or as my wife says, I can't seem to hold a job, so. <laughs> So thank you all for that. Um, I actually want to just throw in another thought. Some students decide, talk about, oh, well, I'm going to go to work and then I'll get my, my advanced degree. Um, from my own experience, I finished my undergrad and went directly to work actually without thinking about a graduate degree and ended up going back to school. So if that's something where maybe you initially are thinking, ah, I just want to work, that doesn't mean you can't do the grad school later. I actually did my master's degree all part time while I was working. So um, there are lots of different ways to get into the master's programs. And I'm let me we have some q and A. I'm trying to move down. There we go. Awesome. OK, so a question was specifically asked about biomedical engineering, but uh, for I don't think I don't know that Paul has details about the biomedical engineering process. So the best thing to do is talk to the grad advisor in biomed because they're going to have the details specifically for the biomedical program. Uh, there was also a question asking about master's degrees in architectural engineering. We currently don't have an architectural engineering master's program. Architectural engineering is a fairly new undergrad program. So we have not, uh, there's not been a master's degree program developed in architectural engineering. Um, the next question was, are the master's programs funded? And that got a thumbs up. So somebody else wants to know the same thing. So anybody want to take a stab at the question about funding in master's degrees programs? And they're looking around at each other. I can talk about that. Thank you, Ginger. Sure. So um, PhD students are generally funded and then when when and if there are more funds available, then those are given to master's students. But uh, there are various scholarships that have been recently offered by the College of Engineering to different master's students who are top applicants for their program. Uh, those we send out an email to our student listserv whenever there's an opportunity. Also, one thing to think about is, of course, there's on campus jobs, which you can get a job on campus to help with um, funding. And um, if there's scholarships or, or later things, you can do an internship. There's various rules on when you can do an internship, but students often do a CPT for international students. Uh, American students can do an internship whenever they like, uh, as long as they also remember they need to focus on their uh, academics. But there's a CPT, a curricular practical training, and that's when a master's student would get or a PhD student would get uh, funded by way of salary through an internship. Thank you very much. Um, anybody want to add to that? Just a, just a note about master students. Um, we have done some, we have looked a little bit at um, a lot of our master students, you know, like to like to know what job opportunities there are. We have found in, in a few of the departments we've looked at it that getting some type of work experience while you're getting your master's is a really good tool for helping improve your your opportunities for employment um, and of course we always tend to think of that is i'm doing a, a summer internship or a co-op and those are good um, another thing too is some of our master students actually get positions either volunteering or working in labs uh, with faculty any of those experiences are, are really helpful when you're interviewing it gives you something to talk about besides what class did i enjoy um, you know, having having a little bit of real world experience where you get a little dirt on your hand is always a good thing, particularly for an engineer. 
perhaps not a computer scientist, but. <laughs> All right. Um, so the other thing I and I'm just adding on to this. So the question was, are they funded? Let me let me state that when we talk about someone being funded, what that actually means is that they are working in a role either as a graduate research assistant or as a graduate teaching assistant when we talk about being funded. So it's mm -hmm. not uh, unless you're talking about a scholarship, most of our funding comes in the form of an assistantship, which is basically a working role. So as a research assistantship, you would be working in a lab with a faculty member who has grant money or other funding that pays you a salary as a research assistant. As a teaching assistant, you're working with a faculty member, being a grader, maybe teaching a few classes, holding labs, and you're, you're earning a salary for that role as well. So being funded means that you're working in one of those roles typically, okay? Um, the other question that's listed is, does the mechanical engineering department accept students uh, directly with the from bachelor's to PhD without the master's degree? I believe all of our departments do currently have the BS to PhD program. Paul, you can correct me if I'm wrong there, but I believe master that mechanical engineering has that program. Again, as was mentioned, um, they may or might may not accept very many students directly from bachelor's to PhD. So they may prefer that a student have a master's first and then apply to the PhD student program. Only a small number of students are typically admitted directly bachelor's to PhD, at least in the programs I've seen. That's correct. That's the same thing I have seen. OK. All right. So thank you students. I'm trying to keep up with questions and Ginger, you want to add something? Yeah, I think it's it has to do a lot with the level of commitment. Um, like I said, for CSE, if you if you start with out with the bachelor's to PhD, um, you may you will likely get funding. Um, but if you drop out, that's that's not good <laughs> um, because you're not able to get a bachelor's. I'm sorry, you're not able to get a master's. This program is specifically structured such that once you enter the BS to PhD program, the only degree uh, you can attain is the PhD. Now you could go back and apply for the master's degree and take different courses. So as the others have indicated, a PhD is a research degree. And maybe you want to go into research uh, to a lab, like they said, or into academia. So it, it does take a level of commitment for going for a PhD. OK, um, <clears throat> so I wanted to also have you guys talk just briefly um, about. Why a student might choose to do fast track versus regular entrance into a master's program? What's the benefit for a student? And what does fast track mean from a student standpoint? Uh, did you want to start that one for us? Sure. So we have quite a few students in the CSE fast track program. Fast track is the fast track into earning your master's degree, which means you take up to three graduate level classes in your undergraduate career and those classes count both in your undergrad degree and in your master's degree. So for us, students who get into the fast track program are admitted into the 30 hour master's degree program, and then they will upon entry up already have up to nine hours of credit. So that takes off that many classes that they have to do, which is why like when they were saying you can earn a master's degree so quickly. So it, it there is a GPA minimum and, and certain things it's it is for um, the excellent students and it just helps you get your master's degree like they said, maybe in a year rather than the traditional two to two and a half years because you're using credits for both the bachelor's and the master's degree. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah, you had a question about when when would you do one versus the other? Fast tracks work particularly well if you're getting a bachelor's and a master's in the same program. Mm -hmm. um, often that it does isn't an option if you're going to switch programs. Uh, so if you 
you know, if you've gotten a very, very specialized bachelor's degree and then uh, want to uh, maybe branch out and get a master's in another field, uh, typically the fast track is not open there. Uh, but again, it, you know, it's what your interests are. The fast track program also offers the opportunity for students to try out graduate level classes. If you're not sure, but you know, what does it mean to be a master's student? What are the graduate level classes like? Well, with Fast Track, you are in the graduate level classes, but they still count towards your bachelor's degree. So even if you, you know, took the program and you completed your bachelor's degree and then decided master's work wasn't for you, you still complete your bachelor's degree and have had that experience with taking those master's level classes. So if you're concerned that maybe, you know, you're not sure if it's for you or not, Fast Track can be a good way to experience it. Excellent. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. <clears throat> yeah, and don't forget that if you're in Fast Track program, your graduate program application fee is waived. So you save some money there and also definitely the GRE score is waived. So you have some something to, to a uh, much smoother transition. Excellent. All right. Um, come on, students. If you have more questions, go ahead and put them out there. So I have I've got another general question for you guys. So stu our students, our undergrads, once they finish a degree here, they certainly could go on to other universities to do graduate programs. Um, Myself, I actually finished an undergraduate and moved to another state. So when I did my graduate program, I did it in the location that I had moved to. What would be a benefit for our students staying at UTA for their graduate programs? Because we know they're capable of going wherever they want. So why should they stay at UTA to do these programs? Paul, you want to start us off? Sure. There are definitely advantages uh, for staying or going to a different location. Um, I ended up going to a different location because of a spouse who was moving. So, uh, you know, there are a lot of situations like that that influence it. Mm -hmm. One of the things we do find is that uh, if you're trying to get through a program quicker, uh, having been familiar with the faculty and all, it really does help. And we had mentioned about GRE waivers and things like that make it easier for you. One of the other opportunities too is a lot of programs have independent study courses uh, as, as well as opportunities for doing research with faculty. Typically when you start a new program, it takes a semester or two before uh, you learn the lay of the land, the faculty learn about you. So it could be into your second year before you're able to take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, if you are staying at the existing program you're in, everybody already knows you, which of course could be good or bad. Uh, <laughs> we're assuming it's good. And that means that gives you more opportunities. Uh, a couple of the students that we've worked with recently actually started as an undergraduate research assistant. And when they started their master's program, they just continued on in that. So they had a lot more work experience. I want to mention one other thing too on starting your master's. Sometimes students get worried about the commitment. They say, what happens if another opportunity comes up? Uh, most of our master's programs do have courses that are online also. So we have had situations where a student finishes two semesters full time and then all at once gets a job opportunity uh, and they're nervous. Um, you know, should I do this or not? Well, you can, uh, you know, finish part of your degree full time and then if something comes in and you need to move or take a job, you can still stay with the program and just complete it part time online. That way you don't lose that progress you've made. Excellent. Um, all right, so. And again, panelists, if you want to add something, feel free to jump in. I'm kind of watching to see who unmutes themselves and and calling on people sort of based on that. Um, so given that we might have students who want to stay and get advanced degrees, how easy is it for them to find a mentor? And how do they go about it? That would be another good question. How do you go about trying to find somebody? And I've got a couple more student questions after we do this. Yeah, I, I think what Dr. Compenation just mentioned earlier is that if you continue in the same institution, you tend to you you generally know who 
most likely who are the faculties that are doing some research and in, in the area that's of interest to you. So you don't have to waste time searching and uh, and finding out uh, who to work with and what are the research topics. Another important thing here is that at UTA now we're right in the middle of the area in the country that's growing rapidly, both in terms of job and high tech activities in engineering and so on. So um, uh, in terms of finding out who the advisors, uh, the best way is just knock at the door as Dr. Combination mentioned earlier. And since you're already in undergraduate program here, just you know, feel free to reach out to faculty and learn about what they are doing. And uh, that's the best way and get to know because again, graduate degree is more focused and especially PhD, you want to find the right advisor or in the right field that is of interest to you. And that's more important than just the school itself, but it's the faculty. So yeah, knock at the door and, and get to know them. And then, then you get the opportunity in, in term, during your undergraduate to do actually a head start in terms of undergraduate research. Absolutely. Paul, did you want to add something to that? Actually, no, he covered that really well. <laughs> All right, thank you. So we have some questions from the students and let me bring those up. Um, so we have two that are that are related and I'm going to I'm going to let the uh, let you guys address both of these. So one question says as a first year student, how do I get involved with fast track? And the other question says as a transfer student, how do I get involved with fast track? So in general, at what point in their career does a student um, make a commitment to the fast track master's program and what do they need to do to make that kind of commitment? Who wants to what? take something? Donna. Donna great. I'll great. say for the <clears throat> for the CS department, if you're interested in fast track, then um, a good way is to contact me and I will look at your qualifications and send you the information on what our fast track program is and what the qualifications are. And once you've contacted me and you're on my list, um, I will keep track of you and every semester I will come back and ask, are you still interested? And we can discuss what semester you will become eligible. And at that semester when you become eligible, then we can talk about whether or not you want to still join the program and what we want to do moving forward. So roughly when could they become eligible? Um, around the sophomore junior is when you start taking the classes that are qualifications. Now you don't actually qualify to join fast track until you're within 30 hours of graduating. But as far as expressing interest in it, you know, after your second or you know second year, beginning of your third year is a good time to contact us. Make sure you're on track. Make sure you understand what your options are. But you do have to be within 30 hours of graduating before you're allowed to join the fast track program. Excellent. Saibun, is it similar in electrical engineering? Yeah, it's, it's very similar. And I, I, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the student who are in freshman and just beginning transfer students to start thinking about that. That's very good planning. Early, early planning is very, very important and also give you a different meaning of why you take certain courses. But yes, uh, I think um, within the uh, 30 hours, so similar. And uh, um, and of course, you have to be in professional program before you can uh, even apply. So uh, it's similar uh, requirement, I think throughout the college, if I'm not mistaken, right, Dr. Companation? Yes, I believe that's correct. Excellent. So there's one other uh, student question. I'm going to broaden it out a little bit. The student asked uh, in CSE, can a student earn two or more graduate certificates while pursuing their masters? So I'll let CSE answer that and then I want to bring up graduate certificates because we didn't mention those and I wanted to give you a chance to uh, discuss the graduate certificates that are available and what those are and how they can work with our, our various master's programs. So Ginger, would you like to take the two or more certificates pursuing a master's in CSE? Sure, sure. So um, CSE certificates right now, the graduate level certificates, they are in computer engineering and in computer science. And there's, I think, eight total. Um, and yes, you can do more than one certificate for international students. The international student must be in a degree seeking program and then they can add the certificate on so and you can complete as many as you would like that are within your limit of your i-20 essentially 
Um, so you would just contact us in the CSE department. Um, our general email is csegradadvising at uta.edu, and you can write to us about Fast Track or about uh, the certificate. So yes, it is possible. You uh, generally take four to five classes per certificate. Some of them you're already taking for your degree. So as long as you're within your I-20 limit. Yep. Thank you. So I also want uh, to get a little more information about the information to our audience about our graduate certificates overall and what is a graduate certificate in the first place and what how do they work with that? Is it truly something they can do only as a grad student? Are there undergrad certificates, et cetera? And Paul, I'm going to put you on the spot on this one. Sure, I'm ready for that one. <laughs> uh, actually, certificates is are one of the fastest growing uh, degree options across the country. Um, actually, I think in 2017 was the first time we actually awarded more certificates than we did masters and doctorate degrees. And there's there's several reasons for this. Um, certificates you can earn either credit or non-credit. Most universities, in, including UTA, have a continuing education, or as we call it, a uh, division of enterprise development. And that's the type of group that offer non-credit, very tightly focused certificates that can help develop your career. So for example, if you're interested in, uh, say, occupational safety and health, they have a lot of, of weekend certificates you can get. And that's a good way to help your continuing education as you're working with a company. Now, in the academic side, which is, of course, the College of Engineering, our certificates are a little different. Ours are academic based. That means when you're you're taking our certificate, you're actually earning college credits. Many of those credits uh, in the programs actually apply towards a master's degree. Um, there are several of the certificates we offer where you can get the certificate independent or you can get it in parallel with your master's degree. And the reason these are important is when you go to interview, you want to show what your unique passion, what your unique skills are, and a certificate's a nice way to add a little spice on top of it. I always tell our graduates, I say, when you go out and interview and say, I have a bachelor's in industrial engineering or a master's in industrial engineering or any of our other fields, what sets you apart from everybody else? Uh, and a certificate's a great way to do that. So how much... How many classes and what does it take to get a certificate? It's variable depending on the department. For most college academic based certificate, there's a minimum of three courses. Sometimes it goes up as high as five. Now, when you do that, it also depends on the particular certificate. A lot of programs count um, many of the courses you're using in your master's program in parallel with your certificate. And then sometimes they will ask you to take one or two additional courses to get the certificate itself. Other programs, actually, uh, you can earn a certificate by selecting the correct set of electives. So you don't actually add an, any more courses to your master's program. But again, that's something you really want to talk directly with your advisor with right when you start the program. That way you can plan out the sequence and make sure you take the right courses when they're available. So those are definitely about grad course grad certificates what about undergraduate certificates are we offering those and what are those if we are i know there are some but that's only because i know we have one in industrial engineering uh, undergraduate certificates are not quite as common um, there are options for doing minors which right. a lot of students do uh, and then there are opportunities to earn certificates sometimes that are offered by professional societies, which again are not academic based, but definitely help you when you're looking for a job. And just to expound on that a little bit, if you aren't aware of minors, any College of Engineering student can get minors in other departments in the College of Engineering as well as minors across campus. So. Uh, I know personally students who've minored in, who've majored in computer science, but minored in art, minored in political science, minored in women's studies. So you can minor in anything that uh, feeds your passion, as Dr. Combination has been saying. 
you can minor between departments. So you could major in computer science, minor in industrial engineering or in electrical engineering. You could major in electrical, minor in mechanical, etc. So if you want to, if you're uh, passionate about mechatronics and robotics, for example, you might be a mechanical engineering major and get that electrical engineering minor to support that particular passion. Um, it's really key to work with your advisors because they're the ones who can help you find the path that provides what you're interested in and what you're wanting to do and maybe help you figure out what you're wanting to do. I know advisors certainly do a lot of that, right? Help you figure out what it is that you're passionate about. OK, so. Um, are there this is a, another general question. We've got just a few minutes left. Um, are there research opportunities available to students who are in the BS to PhD or to the fast track programs that might not be available to other students? Boy, that's a tough one. I, I, <laughs> I don't I don't know that we in general try to restrict things. There are, of course, certain options, you know, working with faculty or certificates or things that have prerequisites, but we don't tend to limit things. You know, we try to keep them as open as possible. I know that I was very impressed when I was talking with the folks doing the MAE Formula One racer um, that when I looked at their team, they actually had folks from a lot of different departments that you know just were really interested in Formula One. Mm -hmm. um, they had one lady out of civil engineering who was doing a lot of work on the electronics for the, the car. So the most important thing you can do is ask. Mm -hmm. You know, talk with the faculty, talk with the advisor and see what's out there. It's not like there's a website where you go to and say, let me check all the boxes of all the things I'm interested in. Right. You know, what you need to do is go out and, and, and network and learn. I think the point I want to bring up is we always we always wonder why am I coming to campus for class? Why can't I do this online? Well, there's an awful lot of things you can learn and experience on campus um, that that's the value of coming to a university, of staying with the university. Uh, those options are available where they, they are not available online. So, you know, take advantage of that. Get out there and network, talk with people you know, and, and find what interests you and who you enjoy working with. Thank you. Anybody want to add to that? It looked like somebody was going to say something, but I don't want to put anybody. I always put Paul on the spot, but I wasn't going to put anybody else on the spot. Donna, did you want to add something? Yeah, while there aren't specific, like Paul said, not specific opportunities, but if you're in the fast track program or the BS to PhD program, you will be exposed to more opportunities. If you are in the graduate version of a class, you are more likely to find out or be exposed to or become known to the professors who teach the graduate level classes that you're interested in things and that you're good at things. You wouldn't have that opportunity being just in the undergraduate version of the classes per se. So it's nothing specific. It's just you have more exposure. Getting those opportunities. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so let's see, I think I've covered most of these. So we have roughly five minutes left. And again, students, we still have time for questions if you guys want to add any. But I was going to give each of our panelists a chance to uh, sell their grad program or grad certificates or both and tell you why they really feel like it's a benefit to you to pursue these things. All right. So now that I've posed the question and give them 10 seconds to think about it, uh, I'm going to start by, I think, calling on Ginger to have her tell us if I'm if I'm a student, why are you why do you feel like I should go ahead and pursue a graduate degree or a graduate certificate? What what would you say to me? 
Uh, I would say that, like may have been mentioned before, a certificate and the fast track program are a great way to kind of just put your toes into graduate work and see if that's what you really want to do. And like they said before, the salary potential, there's a big difference in salary potential between uh, having a bachelor's degree and having an advanced um, degree. Uh, certificates are also uh, just a great way to add to your skills and a certificate you actually like take it is for the ones in CSE they are real as opposed to fake but they are actual graduate level classes and you actually do have it appear on your transcript so and you do get a piece of paper at the end that says certificate in so they're not a passive thing certificates are are akin to a diploma uh, but also a, a big difference in, in the hours. Obviously, uh, 12 or 10 courses versus four courses is a big difference, uh, but they are a way to showcase your skills in a specific area. All right, thank you. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna now put Saibuna on the spot. What would you say to uh, convince somebody that they should think about grad school or grad certificates? Yeah, I think I brought up earlier about two important things and also Ginger brought it up again. One is, of course, the kind of uh, work and the kind of career you will have and also the reward that you get from there. And as all of you know that in the undergraduate uh, program in all of this engineering give you a, a broad based foundation. And um, in electrical engineering is even more so because everything you touch involves electrical engineering. So uh, and going from the very basic building of circuit all the way to the advanced nanoelectronics or chip design or even space uh, sensors. So it's so broad. So if you, uh, in, that's why in electrical engineering, we have to somehow organize our strength in, at least at UTA. And what we, have did, we did is we organized to five different tracks, five different area. Uh, one is in photonics electronics. So you can focus on that if you want to, while uh, optical communication, optical sensing, LIDAR, uh, you know, uh, autonomous driving. So those involve optical photonics. Uh, and then, well, of course, we have the computing aspect and digital uh, circuits aspect, uh, embedded systems. And the other part is the power and energy, which is uh, grow, uh, growing leap and bound in terms of renewable energy. How do you manage? How do you control them? And it's becoming another big issue coming up because of the scarcity of energy and global warming issues. Uh, and then, of course, intelligent and control systems. So there's another track area. And finally, of course, communications and um, signals processing, which is ubiquitous in, in life, uh, our daily life now. So the graduate program allow you to kind of get deeper at, in at the master level. Of course, if when you go to PhD, you really, really get really creating something new. So um, if, if not for anything else, it's just the kind of um, job and career that you will have if you go into the um, graduate level it's uh, vastly different than just an undergraduate uh, training. Thank you. Donna, you want to add a little bit here? So what would you say to talk, convince somebody they should do that graduate degree or certificate? Well, I just want to say, um, having done two master's degrees, one straight out of bachelor's, you know, went straight to uh, work on MS, was a GTA, was a GRA, did all of that versus the second master's degree was completely online and I did it as an older person and while working full time. So I've done it both ways and there's advantages and disadvantages to both. Okay. Um, <clears throat> of course, well, when I did the master's while working full time, I only did one class at a time, so it took five years, but I also wasn't in any debt for it. So that was an advantage, but doing it as, you know, straight out of my undergraduate, I was able to be much more involved, which we've talked about here, you know, much more involved in the research side and, you know, went to conferences and presented papers. That was something much easier to do when I was a full-time student and involved much more. So if, if that's the type of thing that interests you, I would really highly suggest doing it as soon as you can after finishing your undergraduate degree. And like I said previously, you never, never know what life will bring you. And at some point in your life, it could come back that those degrees make the difference. I would not be in the position I am today without those degrees. 
So if you can take the year, year and a half to get that master's degree, then do it. Yep. yep. All right. All right. So we're just about out of time. Paul, did you want to throw in one last comment? Anything related to the grad program? Sure. My last comment is do not think of education and training as something you finish. It's part of your career as you go forward. So yes, we'd like you to consider getting your master's or certificate right away, but have it be part of your career plan, whether it's immediately or in the future. Um, you don't want it. You don't want it to be something where 10 years from now you go, darn, I didn't get that promotion because somebody else had some training, some certificate that I could have had and I didn't do. Thank you. And in fact, it's not just part of your career, it's part of your life. And you just, as, as Donna said, you never know where you're going. I could never have imagined myself in the role I'm currently in when I was an undergraduate. That, that picture was so far away, I, I would have had, I had no concept that I might end up here. I love what I do and I'm so lucky but I didn't know that that was what was going to happen. So the idea of continuing to learn is going to is going to be throughout your life. So thank you for spending this time with us. We hope you got some great information about our graduate programs. If you have general questions, I'm going to put my email in the chat and you're always welcome to email me and uh, Dr. Combination. If you're in the departments, Dr. Chwachwa or, or Ms. French or Ms. Dickens, email any of us for questions, we'll get you to the right people. We'll make sure that you get the answers that you need. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you panelists for taking your time to talk and answer the students' questions and come back again to see another virtual brown bag. Thank you very much. Bye everyone. Bye everyone. <laughs>